So folks, here's beetroot picked from my garden today. And I'm going to boil this and pickle it. And nothing will be wasted. Okay, so I'm now in the kitchen and I've got the beetroot in the sink. I'm just letting it drain off. You'll see that there's very little waste with this recipe. I'm going to use the leaves as well. Uh, and in fact, it will virtually all be used um, somewhere. And there's the last of my apples, incidentally. It's been a good growing season this year. Hey folks, so it's beetroot day in the house today. And we've got some real beauties here. We've got some uh, really impressive beetroot and then some not so impressive. But that's typical. This is nature. This is what uh, she gives us back. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to be chopping these down, boiling the beetroot up, and then I'm going to be taking the stalks and leaves off and showing you what you can do with them as well. It's a great vegetable and it's very versatile. So I'm just switching camera angles and what we're going to see now is what I'm doing here. So I'm going to begin by putting some salt in this saucepan. Nice bit of grainy rock salt. And I'm going to add to that some cold water. So you can see I've got a saucepan full of salt and water just here. That goes on this ring and I'm going to turn this on right now. So I'm going to let the water boil and while that water's boiling I'm going to be uh, preparing the beetroot. So I'm going to start off with my uh, large impressive friend and you'll see that this cuts nicely. Now you'll notice that this is a very interesting looking beetroot. It's not the typical beetroot colour. This is in fact called a, a golden globe variety I believe it was called and I'm just chopping the roots off and I've got the rest of that left as the uh, vegetable itself I'm not peeling it because the peels easier to get off when it's been cooked I'm just going to put that in the pan and I'm going to carry on doing this with all of the rest of my beetroot and incidentally even these bits here that look like rubbish are going to be recycled because they're going to go on the garden uh, to make compost So I'm putting my uh, vegetable waste inside here and these are not waste, not necessarily. The rubbish bits are like that, that's waste. But these are good and these can also be eaten. So I'm going to put these in this jug but I'm going to put some clean cold water in there just to sort of keep them perky. So I'll just again take all the rubbish off. And all these little bits we can get rid of. That will all form. Um, it will all go towards making a compost for next year. And these leaves I'm just going to put in here. I'm just sorting through them to make sure there's none which have got slugs, snails and other garden creatures on them. This is nature as it happens. That one's a bit eaten and black so I'll chuck that one. And... Yeah, that's okay. They're fine. Keep that one. Rubbish. Yeah, they're okay. And uh, you, know, you get little bits on them, but it's uh, that's a bit brown. Get rid of that one. And oh, that'll do. That. Okay, so this is going to take me a while to go through them all. So I won't film the whole thing because that won't be that interesting. So I'll come back to you in a little while. So I've got the beetroot in the pan. As you can see, the water's already starting to turn the colour of the beetroot. And the water's just beginning to simmer now or it's just coming up to a simmer. I've got all the leaves here and I'm going to be treating them uh, shortly. But my first job is to get rid of the waste and make some uh, bit of tidy space. So I'm going to put all this in the compost heap and then I'm going to come back in here. Okay so the compost heap has now been uh, filled up with uh, the remnants of the beetroot uh, stalks and uh, roots 
and uh, now I'm going to uh, treat the leaves. I'm going to wash them, I'm going to chop them, I'm going to add them to some uh, chopped onion and I'm going to stir fry them and then they'll be uh, useful to have in a meal which I'm going to have tomorrow actually with some roast pork. Um, the beetroot leaves themselves and the stalks are full of vitamins. You can use them as a substitute for things like spring cabbage or Swiss chard. So let's see what happens. So I've just got a cold tap running and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just wash each leaf and make sure it is definitely clean, that there's no bits of grit, no stones and no bugs on there. So I'm going to go through, I've got quite a lot to go through. And then when I've done them, I'll start chopping them up. So I'm about a quarter of the way through the leaves, but um, it's getting a bit, uh, obviously a bit of a pile on the chopping board. So what I thought I'd do is start cutting them up now and adding them into this uh, bowl just here, just somewhere to put them for now uh, until I cook them. So I'm just going to go down and this is, it's just a rough cut. You don't have to be fancy, nothing to show off about, but a nice big hefty knife that will get through easily is best and try not to knock your leaves onto the hob like I'm doing. You can see the stalks are really fibrous like celery and completely edible and really good for you. So I'm going to put that lot into this bowl just here and I'm going to repeat the process until I've done all of them and as you can see I've still got quite a way to go. So the beetroot is boiling away nicely now um, I'm going to let it let them boil for about 20 minutes, like you would potatoes. I'll stab them with a knife, make sure they're soft before I uh, turn them off. It looks like I'm going to need a bigger bowl because I've still got a long way to go. You get a lot of veg from beetroot. So the beetroot are still bubbling away. I've had to take the lid off because they began to boil over and that is what is left of the leaves and stalks. That was a monster effort, trust me. Next bit is to get some onions chopped. I've got a nice big wok and I'm going to put some extra virgin olive oil into that wok. Nice generous amount because there's going to be plenty going in there and a little bit of salt in the bottom. Again Give it some flavour as it's cooking. Right, onions. I'm using three red, two white. Uh, they're only medium sized onions, in fact they're actually quite small onions and because there's so much beetroot leaves and stalks I feel like I need to use more than I would normally use. But these aren't actually that big. So I'm just going to chop them and I'm going to put them into the wok. So you can see now that I've peeled them and taken the outer layer off that they're not actually huge onions at all. Uh, I always take the outer layer off as well as the skin because I find the outer layer a bit creepy. I don't know what you do but I, I don't particularly like it. But I don't feel bad because nothing gets wasted, it all goes in the compost heap. Right, time to chop. So we can consider them chopped and now they're going to go into the wok. So I'm just going to fire the wok up. Okay, doesn't need to be raging. And then I'm going to put the onions into the wok. Probably would have been better in hindsight if I turned the chopping board round. It's hard to film and tip. Now they're all in there and I'm just waiting for the uh, things to start cooking really. So there's a lot of wires going on. We've got the slow cooker out ready to do a pork jointing. It's all going this house. And if you're interested, that's a Kima Vindaloo for tonight. No, I didn't film that one, but my wife's made that and it's delicious. I love the smell of onions frying. I'm just going to add some dried Italian herbs to this, quite a generous amount. 
I'm not afraid. And now the smell gets even better. So I'm just going to have a look at the beetroot and give it a prod with a knife. And they seem quite soft actually, so I think that's cooked. So what I'm going to do now is turn that off. There we have it. And I'm going to get them out of that and into some cold water. Continuing the ethos of zero waste with this dish, I'm going to strain the water into here. Put the colour of it. Yep. It looks like we. I know. Somebody had to say it, so I've just said it. Now the reason I'm doing this is that that water is going to be reused. So here's my nice steaming jug of beetroot water. I'm now going to add a little bit of this into the onions. And the rest of it will be divided between the gravy I'm going to make tomorrow and if there is any left after that, it will go on the plants in the conservatory. So, no waste. I don't get on my soapbox very often. Well, maybe I do. But I think that waste is a symptom of having too much. And, you know, it's, it's sad that people do waste things which can be reused. So, I try, where as possible, not to waste anything. And that's one of the great things about these recipes. You know, beetroot from basically from the ground to your plate, zero waste. Yeah, I think it's it's one of the best vegetables for doing this with. So I've just put some cold water onto the beetroot to help them cool down because uh, they're too hot to handle at the minute. And again, the water will go on the plants in the garden or in my conservatory. And you can see how easily the skin now comes off. It's quite hard to get off when they're not cooked. Right, I'm just going to let them all cool down a bit because I am actually slightly burning my fingers. I've put a lid on the wok while the onions are sweating um, and I just want that to sort of build up a nice bit of steam and, and get those onions cooked through and soft before I start to add uh, the beetroot leaves. I've now peeled all the beetroot and as you can see the skin is just there. It really did come off very easily actually so it's a great tip to peel them once they've been cooked and not before. And these are now going to be pickled. And I'm pickling them now. It's October and I'm doing it in time for Christmas. Because we like pickled beetroot at Christmas. Although I might just try one. It's lovely. Oh yeah. That's nice. What a veg. So here's my vinegar in my pickle jar. Inside there currently I've got onions, uh, some peppers and some other bits of veg. And basically uh, I just keep topping it up with new veg and adding a bit more vinegar and sometimes a bit of sugar uh, when I need to. And uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Once the things are pickled, then, you know, they keep for ages. I'm just going to take this uh, mush onto the plants in my garden just to feed them. And then I'm going to come back over here and carry on with this part of it. And just in case you were wondering, the beetroot are now back in the pickling jar and they're going to stay there until Christmas. The onions have sweated nicely. Oh, that smell. I love the smell of onions cooking. I think actually onion is probably my favourite vegetable in terms of flavour. I think I put onion in just about every dish I ever make. Right, let's get some beetroot leaves and stalks in. I'll start with the small one, the easy one. Now, this will sink down and break down. Once the fibres begin to cook, this will sink and it will... I'll get a lot more in here than what you might imagine. But I need it to start to cook first. And the best way that that will happen is with the lid on. So I'll be back. And in fact, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add a bit more of the beetroot water just to help that steam build up inside there. I don't want to add too much. I want it to 
steam rather than boil. So you can see it's begun to break down a little bit, sink in. So that's good. I just want to turn it around so it's not the same that's getting in contact with the water all the time. And then I'm going to add some more on top. I've got plenty going. So I've now got it all in there and I'm just going to put the lid on top now and I'm just going to leave that to simmer away and steam away and uh, I'll come back to it in a little while, probably 20 minutes or so. A good uh, 25 minutes has gone now and you can see it's really begun to break down and there's a lot of juice come out which is good. I'm going to let it cook for another five minutes and then I'm going to go to the next stage which is to add another ingredient. Let's wait and see. Right, nice and steamy. So that is cooked absolutely beautifully. Look at all the juice that's come out of it. It's really broken down. And now I'm gonna add the next ingredient. You're not gonna be expecting this one, which is porridge oats. Now, if you have ever lived on in Calderdale in West Yorkshire, Hebden Bridge, Mytham Road, Sowerby Bridge, then you might be familiar with something called dock pudding. It's a special variety of dock leaves which grows around that area. It doesn't grow anywhere else. And um, dock pudding is made in this way with the dock leaves. However, chard is a good substitute. And because chard's a good substitute, I'm assuming that these beetroot leaves and stalks will be as well. So what I'm going to have to do now is just to let this continue to simmer and I need the moisture to be uh, soaked up. So I'll probably just have to keep having a, adding a few more um, bits of oats and we'll see what happens from there. You'll see that now the moisture, the liquid has been absorbed. The porridge oats have done their job. And this is going to taste really nice. It might not look it, but trust me, it really does taste good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the heat off and I'm going to leave it. And I just want it to set. And I want all the moisture to be absorbed. And then this is then cooked by um, basically frying it. So you, take, you just basically take some out of it, put it in the frying pan and fry it. I'm going to have some tomorrow morning. In Calderdale in West Yorkshire, it's traditional to have dock pudding with bacon and eggs. So I'm going to fry this in the morning, or some of this in the morning with some bacon and eggs. And I shall have some with my roast pork joint tomorrow. Okay, so I'll catch you in the morning. Sunday morning, I've got breakfast beginning. The water's beginning to boil for the poached eggs. I've got bacon and sausage and mushroom in the pan. And then we've got an empty pan with some melted butter here for the beetroot pudding. And as you can see, it's set absolutely perfectly. It's um, absorbed all the water. And now that's a really nice constituency. And trust me, this tastes absolutely fantastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it into the pan, like that, into the butter. Love that sizzle. I'll roughly do it in some kind of burger type shape. And then just keep moving it round. I want to cook both sides. But this is literally beetroot leaves, stalks, and oats. It's actually vegan. Never even considered that, but it is. Although 
the rest of the breakfast definitely isn't. And what you fry it in obviously determines whether it remains vegan. I'm actually using butter, so it isn't vegan. But you could use olive oil and, you know, fine. Vegan, vegan. So... Oh, the smell of it is absolutely great. I, I can't describe it to you. It's just so different. It's something which, you know, you can do this with spring cabbage. You can do it with Swiss chard. It's originally done with dock leaves, but as, like I said before, a special variety of dock leaves that grow around Calderdale. But this is, honestly, this is, this is a sensation. And I, everybody that I've ever given this to has looked at me and said, what is that? But then when they've tried it, they've come back for more. Right, I've got to leave it to cook anyway. And I've got eggs to poach. I'm going to make a film about perfect poached eggs, if you want to watch that. And I've got to wait for this meat to finish cooking. So I'll be back. So just to say that I've made far more than what I need. There's still some left in the wok. But this will go in the fridge and it will keep for days. Um, but what I'll probably do um, with, with this is, this afternoon I will have some more... Uh, with our Sunday dinner and then the rest of it will be frozen and it keeps in the freezer for absolutely months um, and just get it out when you need it. It's really really good, versatile and something that I recommend that you try for yourself. I've just moved things around on the uh, hob to make a bit more room and what I'm going to do now is just turn these over as best I can so that both sides will cook and brown very loose. I could have probably done with putting some more oats in, in all honesty, but it doesn't matter, they are cooking fine. I know the flavour's there, and I know all of the vitamin D particularly that comes in these is there. And I know there won't be any complaints, which is the best bit. So there folks we've got our end result, we've got the beetroot pudding just here, bacon, mushroom, sausage and a perfectly poached egg. Let's see what it's like. So this is uh, for my wife who's been on a five mile run this morning so she deserves a good breakfast. <laughs> How's the beetroot pudding? It's lovely. Really? Mm. Fantastic. So there you have it, folks. Success. So I'm happy about that. I hope you enjoyed watching the film. So that was beetroot from garden to plate, zero waste, pickled beetroot, and then beetroot leaf pudding. So no wastage. The water's been reused, and all the bits of foliage which I haven't been able to eat have gone into compost. So... Thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. Catch you next time.